Good afternoon. Today is the 28th of May. Um, as you can see, we've got different surroundings today because I'm at my mother's house and um, I've been uh, keeping an eye on for the last couple of days while she um, has been um, recovering from her procedure. She didn't really need to recover from it, really. She She's perfectly fine. Those of you who have asked, thank you very much. She's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, that's great. No, nothing to do with the current situation either at all. So she's absolutely fine and she'll be um, continuing to self-isolate for um, a little while to come. But what um, I'm going to talk about today, and it's something that I think a lot of people have been asking me, although there is already a video um, about this topic on my channel that I will take down now because it's just going to be a worse version of one I'm making today and it's how many cars have I owned um, in a course of my driving career since September 2001 and what sort of cars they were. I'm not going to um, make a lot of individual snippets of this, there's quite a number of cars on this list and um, I'm, I'm going to combine some of, some of the segments together because it will be easier for me to, to edit that way uh, but you will see pictures or representative pictures of all the cars that I've owned. I don't have pictures of some of the cars and so I've had to find um, some of the images from Google and I've covered up number plates where um, they're not the correct ones um, but I do have um, images of all the cars that I've owned or representative ones. I've also thrown in a little bit of video on one of the cars just because I had it to hand. Um, I don't have, I do have video footage on others but it's a bit difficult for me to extract it from quite long videos. I just happen to have some um, a couple of clips of one particular car that's easy for me to access, so I'll put that in. Anyway, let's get started. After I passed my test in 2001, I started driving a 1998 Volkswagen Polo 1.4 CL 5 door. Um, this is a Mark III Polo, it's a pre-facelift one. They changed the engine from the 1.3 to 1.4 before um, this particular one. It was a colour called bright green. There was an earlier Mark III colour called dragon green, but this is a bright green car. Um, didn't have many options on it at all. It, it had a very basic stereo in it. I think the original Sony unit had been nicked by the dealership before we bought it in May 2001. Um, the car was in my mother's name, so technically it wasn't mine anyway, but my sister and my mother and I all, all actually drove that car. We had it quite a long time. We had it until 2006. Um, it didn't have too many problems. It was perfectly fine for a new driver to have. It was much nicer than most of the cars that my friends had anyway. Much newer. It was only three years old when we got it. And, um, yeah, the biggest problems were things like the lack of air conditioning, um, the really, really dark, black, hard plastic interior, which by 90s Super Mini standards wasn't too bad, much better than the Citroën Saxo, for example, but some things like the, the, uh, the door locks were quite sticky and they're a bit cheap. Um, the electric window switches were horribly cheap, and they didn't bother converting from right and left-hand drivers, put them in the middle, which was saving money. And the radio that they left us when we stole the original Sony unit was horrible. It was a Volkswagen commercial vehicles unit and it never worked properly. It was really bad, actually. Um, so, you know, if you have a Mark III Polo, make sure something didn't steal your nice stereo um, when, you, uh, when, you're, when you're selling it. You don't want them to take it. The next car, but actually this was one that I had in my own name. Um, it's a 1997 Mazda 323F 1.5 Innsbruck Special Edition. The car that I've shown on the pictures is not an Innsbruck Special Edition, that's a V6. But they look very similar. The alloy walls were different, they were three spoke and not five spoke on the Innsbruck Special Edition. It was this particular colour. Um, and it was a, you know, a sort of mid-period one. A very late um, 
I think it's called a BA 323F, this particular one. Also known as Atlantis and Estina in other countries, but we got it in Europe as a 323F. Um, same platform as the Mazda uh, ZDOS 6, I think. Um, but 90 horsepower, 1.5 engine, it wasn't that fast. It was fast enough for when you're 19, though. Had a sunroof, had an air conditioning button, but no air conditioning, which was nice of Mazda not to fit it. That's very kind of them. Um, better stereo, nice Sony cassette unit in this. Excellent handling, much better condition as well than the car that uh, Ian Seabrook had quite recently on the Hubnut channel. Um, it was when I got it, got it in September 2002. It was about five and a half years old. Handling, beautiful. Um, quite comfortable for long journeys. Used to drive to um, County Durham and back in that car, which was a long way. Um, much better than most of the cars that um, my friends who were students had. And uh, yes, it was overall very good. A, a friend of mine who I, um, I, I lodged with at the time, um, he helped to pay for the car, which was wonderful. Uh, insurance was quite expensive at the time, but it, 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 these days it would be really expensive if you were 19 and you had a car like that that was that age. Um, so yeah, that was a, that was a great car um, in my name, although I suppose technically I didn't, didn't own it because um, my friend did, uh, had helped buy it. Then I had, um, after a, a fashion, in November 2005, I bought a 1980 Triumph Dolomite 1500 SE because I fancied a classic car. Um, I had a job by that stage. I'd left university and I was earning my I own money, if I was still living, uh, living here in my mother's house. And um, I fancied having a Dolomite. It was like a Sprint lookalike type thing. The original SEs had... Um, dual headlights and um, non-alloy wheels. They were steel wheels, I think, on, a, on an SE. Um, this car had been converted like many SEs were, a special edition of, um, right towards the end of Dolomite production, sort of 79, 80, the SEs were, um, and Dolomite production ended in sort of late 80, early 81. So it looked a bit like a sprint from the outside, but it only had the 1500 um, engine and the really cheap dashboard that the 1300 and the 1500 standard Dolomites had. No rev count or anything like that. Um, original uni part stereo, I think I paid £750 for it. Um, I got it transported down from where it was living in Scotland, and the car needed a lot of work. It needed new tyres, it needed um, new headlamps because they'd blown... Uh, the brake hose, one of them had like deteriorated or something, needed to be reattached in the engine bay or something, so the brakes weren't very good. Um, not very good at starting and not very good at running well. The choke lever wouldn't stay out very well. Um, it was Radio quite, Solid oh, I'm so sorry. Shush. <sighs> Dear me. Don't know why the car just decided to do that. Um, I'll, I'll hopefully it won't happen again. Um, Yes, of a Dolomite, yes. It, my mother wasn't really keen on it. She had a Toledo in the 70s, and um, she thought it wasn't really any better than that. And being a very old car, um, 25 years old when I had it, um, she just reminded her of the bad days of British Island. But I loved the, um, the thick carpet in it. I loved the colour and the interior colour, which was a grey interior with real wood in it. Um, I used to enjoy it, but... Um, yeah, I had to just get rid of it because I was still here and she just wasn't very fond of it and that's just what happens. Um, so what we did was we got rid of the Dolomite and we got rid of the Polo and um, this is a car that my sister I think also drove so you know again the three of us would, would, would drive it but it was this time it was actually mine. Um, it was a 2003 Seat Leon 1.4 S, a base model Leon. It still had um, things like air conditioning and it had a CD player, but didn't have electric mirrors or anything like that. And the engine was a bit small and a bit slow. And surprisingly, it wasn't that economical. I only got 40 miles a gallon out of that. Um, Leons are pretty good cars, um, although these days they do have their problems. Um, like all um, Mark IV Golf based cars, there are a number of issues they have, like the uh, the dashboards um, with the instrument clusters not not reading properly intermittently, the throttle bodies getting gunked up and gearboxes failing and just, you, you know, just all sorts of things these days. They're not very expensive cars, but I quite like my car and I've, I've um, 
after I owned it, a couple of friends then owned it, and then sadly it died after ooh, probably about nine years and 120,000 miles, I think. But the cars were only £10,000 new, so you know what to expect. After I had the lay on it, a um, friend, friend of mine who's in the uh, military bought the lay off me, and I had a temporary car, which was a 1998 Rover 214. I, I think it might it should be an SI, I, I can't remember. In an electric front window, so it's probably an SI. Um, the car you see in the pictures is a three-door, mine was a five-door. Um, this was in 2009. Um, I got the Leon in March 2006. Um, the Dolomite I'd sold probably January, February. Um, so, yeah, we got the, 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 um, the Leon, I think, March 2006. Um, so I, I moved the, moved the lay on, on to my friend, bought this Rover for £9.95. Honestly, it wasn't great. There were a lot of things wrong with it. You know, the head gasket wasn't one of them, actually. It had loads of owners. I like the colour of it, but one thing I really hated about these, um, uh, R3 type Rovers, and I imagine some of the R8 to like this, is the horrible, horrible Peugeot Citroen R65 gearbox fitted to the, uh, lesser powered um, petrol manual cars like this horrible sloppy gearbox out of the Peugeot 306 just just nasty and horrible um, the R3 the, the steering wheel's too low really it's not comfortable for me to drive particularly but yeah it was it was all right um, you know I didn't keep it very long and I moved on to something else That's something else was a 2004 Rover 45 1.4 Club SE. I got that in October 2009. Um, it's either October or November, I can never remember which. It's something about that kind of time. Um, and uh, I managed to offload the uh, Rover 214 to somebody. And um, I really enjoyed the Rover 45. It already had a head gasket replacement. Um, uh, five and a half years old. It had done, I think, six sixty-five thousand miles, something like that. So it wasn't that low mileage um, when I got it, particularly. Actually, no, it made more like fifty, fifty-eight, something like that. Maybe, maybe I'm being a bit disingenuous to it. Um, lots of things did work very well. It needed a new tire instantly, pretty much after I got it. Um, the cam cover gasket was leaking. Classic thing which happens with. Um, with 45s um, post 2003 is the body control unit in the dashboard gets water in it and then fails and then the first sign of that is the driver's um, one shot power window fails and then with those cars unless you have the original pack that the remotes came in with the barcodes um, you can't reprogram new new ones unless you have an original pack with barcodes on them they're quite difficult to find so if you're buying a 45 make sure you've got one with a square or a round remote um they changed in mid 2003 although bizarrely that wasn't really a face look they just changed things like the um engine to euro 4 compliance for petrol and um they changed some of the instruments on the on the dials but it didn't change the actual dashboard all the front to back until 2004 which is really strange so the chain under the skin were sort of done and they changed the suspension settings on the 45s and this was a late one it was just a base engine but the club se had loads of things it had um lumbar adjustment on the driver's seat climate control it had um uh, parking sensors which i was really looking for a car with parking sensors mine was kind of called pageant blue um the seats weren't leather they were sort of a nice cloth it was a nice looking car it was comfortable and nice to drive um although you know the number of things that went wrong with it was just ridiculous i think i just had a bad car and obviously the post facelift ones they have the problems with electrical systems and Everything like that, which um, you know, isn't the best really. Um, so I actually then inherited some money and I um moved it on to somebody for a ridiculous amount of money in 2012, and and bought myself a demonstrator, a one year old Chevrolet Cruze 1.6 LT. It was um 
from the garage in Tunbridge Wells and it had done 5,500 miles. I think I paid 9,500 for it, um, which wasn't bad for a car at that age, really. Um, I really enjoyed it. It, um, it wasn't quite as kind of comfortable to ride in as the Rover because the suspension was a bit further. The electric power steering made it doesn't didn't it wasn't engaging to drive as the Rover. Um, but you know, more space, better space at the back, better finished interior, under warranty, um just a just a good car. Um they're really good cars of their time. And they're so cheap now. Um the main issue I had with that car actually was the um the rear visibility when people used to borrow it was quite bad. So obviously plug in parking sensors and um the drive shaft oil seals on cruises always seem to leak i don't know why they all do it and this one did it like my next car that i that i had I, I sold that one to a friend and then went on to a um a 2014 um chevrolet cruise 1.7 diesel you can actually see this car in tweed jacket reviews if you want to um pretty much the same a few minor changes in equipment this is a post facelift one the 2011 car was a pre facelift much more power much more economy much more torque um nicer to look at wasn't so keen on the blue color particularly um but they have got pretty rare by 2014 i got mine from a car supermarket um which is in portsmouth i think and i paid seven thousand five hundred pounds for it um it was around 18 months old um when i got it and it had done twenty five thousand miles so it's quite high mileage but you know they put some new tires on it for me and serviced it and yeah the only problem i had with that was the diesel particulate filter when you didn't change the oil the oil in it because we, we we um actually shared with these two cars with black chevy and this one uh between four of us four of us were driving these cars um at once and um you know i was lending it out to a lot of people and we were racking up 17 18 000 miles a year doing various things um particularly in in the, in the diesel chevy because the economy was very good in it um uh, nice punchy car six-speed gearbox first car i had a six-speed gearbox um and yes i i very much enjoyed it i only got rid of it really as I said so many times, due to the, the ultra low emission zone being announced in uh, in sort of May 2017, and um, I, I moved it on for an, a car we'll speak about in the next section. But in parallel to the diesel Chevy Cruze, I decided to order another classic, and I bought myself a 1996 Rover 216 SLI automatic, an RBRH shape. Now, we think the car was made in 1995 because although the car had registered 31st October 1996, um, they had finished production to the five-door R8s by then. They got into the R3 shape, um, 200. So, yeah, it was, was been hanging around for a while at a dealer and sold somewhere. Um, Nightfire Red, automatic. Um, I really liked it. The reason I got rid of it, actually, was because um, I didn't do my homework properly. And um, although I didn't pay that much for the car, I think £650. Very low mileage, I think 45,000 miles. Lots and lots of things wrong with it. My gosh, um... Cam cover gasket leaks three times. Uh, electric rear window and electric didn't work. Um, glove box didn't shut properly. The, the windows w would go up and down, but very slowly. And sometimes you had to help my bit go up. Um, electric sunroof worked very well, though. And um, it's quite nippy around London. You could uh, get some tyre squeal going in that car. Um, I did quite long journeys in it sometimes as well. And it, it never broke down on me or anything. Um, but I found out towards the end of um had the car but actually that car was a cat d write-off so i always check to see cars i buy and uh you know um whether or not they are you know written off or anything um so i actually traded that car in and i'll tell you what i traded it in for in just a second Now, when um, my late wife and I first got together, which was about March 2016, I had both the cars, although not 
normally at once. I had the uh, the, the Rover Two One Six and the Chevy Cruze Diesel. Um, my lady wife was quite keen on the on the Rover in particular, um, although the Chevy was more practical for long distance and everything like that. Um, it got to the stage there with the with the um, the the Rover that I just had so many advisories that the garage were telling me I needed to get fixed on it. Uh, I don't even remember what they were, just long as my arm and you know, this is, is the MOT plus just general service advisories on it and you know, I, I'd, I'd done 13, 14,000 miles in a year and you know, a lot of us had driven it and um, it was it was okay but I, I felt I needed to be a bit more practical and um, by this time I, my lady wife was sort of, although we weren't, weren't even engaged at this time, um, she was sort of hinting to me that actually she would probably like to learn to drive which is good um and i didn't i didn't want to you know subject her to an automatic rover um that was 20 years old um for her first car I, you know i think that probably was not the best thing um for her to drive around um drive around in um because it broke down or something went wrong so traded it in for the 2014 mg3 1.5 style in november 2016 um this uh, car we had until February this year, uh, 2020, and you know it's one of the cars that actually was in the first batch of YouTube videos I ever did. Um, I don't really have too much more to say. But it's a very very good car. A lot of people say that they're not. I can tell you from experience that they are. And considering the price we paid for the car, which is five thousand two hundred pounds um, in November 2016. Um, it didn't actually lose that much value, and it was it was pretty good. Um, you know, I've got videos that tell about the issues and things like that. Uh, we have with the car elsewhere. I, I think main was the fuel pump going, um, which was about four years old and forty eight thousand miles. The fuel pump packed up, which is a bit of convenience. It left us stranded just off the twenty five, um, but you know, we you know what you expect. Uh, you can't have everything, everything in life, can you? Then um, to replace the Chevy, eventually, when I sold it to some friends of ours, um, and they still got it. And again, I did review that car on the channel um, about April 2019. I did it, and um, these reviews I've done, I'll put in the description below. Um, I got myself a brand new set, Lado 1 litre TSI Excellence, and I still have that car at the moment. Um, it's fantastic. I, I very few problems with it. Only really two issues. One to do with the um, Kilo Century remote fobs going flat with the battery. That happens in a lot of cars with Kilo Century. And the second thing was the rear USB ports in the armrest fell through about a year into any of the car. I know it's terrible. First world problems. Um, yeah, that's about it. Other than that, it's been fantastic and. You know, when we replace it quite soon, um, we're going to miss it very much. Um, next car, we replaced the MG3 with the Astra Twin Top. Again, a lot of you have seen that on the channel. Um, that is still currently for sale. Again, I don't have an awful lot more to say about it, but I haven't said in the reviews or the walk around and things like that. So I'll put a link to the uh, review and also the, um, um, the, the, the link where I'm selling it. Um, in the description below so you can take a look at it for yourselves um it's you know it's a good car to run around in at the moment um particularly when you put all the four windows down um you can have an entirely open sided um sort of coupe that's really good i like that the uh car that we uh thought we would actually replace the twin top was a car I bought for Santa Pod, um, 1991 Rover 216 SLI Automatic. Again, that car uh, sold quite recently. Um, I put a bit of a video in um, with the car for you, um, just so you can take a look if you haven't already seen it. Um, again, no budget review of that car in the description below. So those are most of the cars I've actually owned, um, and yes, 
they aren't the only ones I've had. I bought some cars for the Santa Pod um, challenge um, over the years. Um, first time we did that was in 2017 uh, for my stag weekend, actually, and then subsequently I bought a, a, you know, a number of others. And I'll just go through them uh, with you now because there's quite a lot, and then we'll, we'll talk right at the end um, in the last section about cars that either weren't in my name but I used to drive an awful lot or cars that I didn't own properly if that makes sense. First one um, I'll talk about 1993 Proton 1.3 um, MPI GLS Saloon um, that was bought from uh, South End and um, I think I paid £200 for it. A friend of mine told me about someone he knew who was selling it, it was going up driving. The car had done 44,000 miles, it had been in the same family since new, and it really hadn't moved for some time. We literally jumped, started it outside this lady's house, um, I think probably nine months after it had last moved, and it fired up straight away, having it on a jump start. Um, the car needed loads of things. Um, if you wanted to keep it, but I really didn't. Um, the gearbox clutch was fine. We got the bonnet repainted in sort of matte black because um, it was horrible and scabby and nasty. Um, again, not like the reason we didn't go to Santa Pod this time, but we didn't go to Santa Pod in the end of the car um, for the racing. We actually drove to a different event, Santa Pod, and back, and it was fine. Um, but yeah, we didn't need it, and so uh, my friend of mine borrowed it for a bit. Um, and then we sold it um, to a couple who needed a temporary car who lived locally to where we were um, in Epsom and uh, yeah I think they enjoyed it. The car actually went through the MOT absolutely fine. The only problem was is that the uh, um, the fuel filler cap was missing because my friend had lost it and they put a new fuel filler cap on for me and then it passed with no advisories. Which, which is good. Um, yeah, I, handling was like a listing ship. wasn't very comfortable. Um, the speakers on the back shelf had, had so sun damaged the cones didn't went in properly. Um, hilarious car to drive. In fact, the doors didn't weigh anything. And, you know, a, a lot of people who went it didn't feel particularly safe. But, you know, when I sold the car, it was the only what, first generation Proton for sale um, on Auto Trader. So that was something interesting. Next car I got for Santa Pod in uh, March 2018 was a 1996 Rover 216 SLI Automatic. I did a fair amount of work to that car. It had new tyres, service, MOT. Um, the brakes were sort of bled on it and things, I think. Um, got the radio working and everything. Original Philips cassette unit. Um, first car that I've, that I've had with my lady wife who said, I really, want, I really like this, I want to keep it. It was a... Um, HHR shape, similar to a 45, but a lot older. Um, this is a saloon, not the uh, not the hatchback. The parking sensors that were fitted as a um, a factory extra never worked apparently. Again, um, 255 pounds I paid for this car. It was um, owned by the same family from you, local family in um, to Epsom. Um, and uh, yeah, I picked it up in a very snowy day and uh, enjoyed the. Um, Slightly bald tyres on the way home. That was fun. Um, when then uh, once I got home, I went straight to straight to the tyre place to get some new tyres on it because I didn't want to die. Um, which was uh, yeah, it was fine. It just again we had too many cars, didn't need it. Went to Santa Pods, did really well. Um, yeah, Honda engine and gearbox. What can I say? Uh, same as a lot of the other cars I've had. Um, next car. 2003 Rover 25 1.4 IL. Um, again, bought the Santa Pod. Bought it actually down here, although we hadn't quite moved down here at that stage. I bought it from local man in Eastleigh. Um, I think his father had owned it or something. Horrible colour, disgusting colour, but, you know, there we go. I shouldn't maybe have bought it, really, because the, um, the car was not comfortable for me to drive. Um, the 25s and... R3 200 just aren't comfortable for me. I don't know what it is, but it might be the steering wheel is too 
low, it might be the fact that the seat's not supportive. 45s, I don't have a problem with. 75s, 600s, RH, no problem. It's just for 25s and the R3 200s, I have a problem with and I don't find comfortable. Um, but it went to Santa Pods. Uh, it, was a, it actually performed really well. Um, little K series. Uh, gearbox was a Ford unit because in mid 2003, the 1.4, 1.6, 25s, 45s got Ford gearboxes as opposed to the, the Rover built ones, which were based on the old Peugeot, it was a 25 and a PG1 Honda design units in the 45. And it was, it was a Ford gearbox, generally pretty good. The 45 I had, had also had a Ford gearbox in it, and that was good. This is a bit knackered, um, but yeah, it was, it was all right. Um, the car I sold for that car for exactly what i paid for it 400 pounds um again a local lady picked that up and took it away um next car was the uh car you saw in the video clip 1998 rover 620 gsi automatic um which there's lots of videos on on my channel the santa pod challenge for 2019 um that uh i paid 320 pounds for quite a number of things wrong with it i don't know why people go on about the car so much it really it, it, it's an interesting car, but it honestly, in my opinion, wasn't that good. I, I've had much better cars than that, um, even some I paid less money for. Um, so, yeah, I, it was fun, but again, I got back what I paid for it, £320, and I spent a fair bit of money on it. So it's all right. It doesn't matter but particularly. And we had a lot of fun with it, and it provided us with lots of content for our respective channels doing the Centerboard Challenge. But um, it really wasn't as good as car as... A lot of people tell me it was. I mean, <laughs> I'm the person who drove it. Um, I think I probably know about it. Um, and yeah, the, mysteriously, the people who were so enthusiastic if I didn't want to buy it after the end as well. So, what can I say? Finally, we're going to get onto three cars that I didn't own um really at all or in one case didn't own very long first one 1998 mazda 626 two liter gsi um that was a car used at my stag weekend where uh 10 of us went used the same car to do runs at santa pod and we did 14 runs in a day and it performed really really well um really really well it, it was actually probably because it's a manual probably even slightly faster than rover 620 there um yes yeah, so we did we did we did well there um bought the car in february 2017 for 370 pounds i think i paid for it but we spent quite a lot of money giving it an mot and doing various things to it and um after santa pod um my friend jim who actually owned the car in his name because it was better to do it on his um policy than mine um he um changed the cam belt in it and he kept it for use for his family for about six months, I think, after Santa Pod, which was June 2017. So we had a spare car lying around a lot of the time, which was quite handy for various things. 12-disc um, CD auto changer, um, electric sunroof, climate control. It was uh, it was pretty good. It was, could have a cruise control, in my opinion. Gearbox was um, a little bit worn, but it had a new clutch in it, which was fantastic. Um, we had to, to fi fix an ABS sensor. One of the brake hoses needed changing. Uh, needed some new tyres, but no one seemed to care. We had a great time. One of these days, I'll probably release the video that my friend Richard Jackson, who owns the MGZ SCV, that you would have seen in some of the videos that um, um, that, that I've done, um, particularly with True Jacket Reviews episode. Um, he filmed the video for us and made it, and it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, another car was um, the 2006 Vauxhall Corsa um, 1.2 SXI twin port that my former housemate owned from 2010 i think till 2018 um he learned to drive in 2010 and he passed and i very often used to use his car um there's not much to say more to say about it though it's a corsa um he didn't do a lot of miles in it i i would just keep it running for him and sometimes drive it to my mother's house and back from epsom which is about an hour and a quarter just to keep it sort of running for him in case he really needed it for the weekend or he go away he didn't need to ever for work because he commuted to central london by train um yeah i mean it's not much to say it's a corsa um they're you know everywhere <laughs> those corsa c's um relatively economical quite under geared um 
fifth gear is very low in a, a car like that. It's revving 4,000 RPM at 70 miles an hour, which can't be good for economy. It certainly was made it a bit loud. Um, yeah, it's not an awful lot to say about it other than that he had it and um, he sold it eventually um, after owning it for ages. Um, I think one of his relatives had owned it after, before him and it had done 12,000 miles in, eight, in four years. Um, ex mobility car, I believe. Um, so yeah, you know, he doesn't even own a car anymore. Lives in Islington, doesn't need one. So yeah. Um, last one, 1996, Suzuki Vitara 1.6. Uh, I think it's a JX. This one, because it had manual windows in it. I bought that car. The intention to take it to Santa Pod. I bought it from a, a local family in um, uh, Surbiton when we were still living in Epsom to. Uh, have put it through an MOT, took it to Centre Pod, I paid £325 for it. Um, and it didn't have an MOT, it expired. Took it to the MOT station. They basically said to me, it needs um, a bit of work. And I looked at the cost of it and I thought, no, I'm not. I'm not even going to bother. Um, I'm not going to bother doing it. I'll just uh, get it parked up on a, on a friend's drive. Which is what I did, um, and um, so we sold it with no MOT, and it actually I made a slight profit on it because um, for some reason everybody want wants these Vitaras to go and use as farm vehicles, or I think actually the car had an MOT um, redone on it, and it, which they were able to was got through the trade, and I think I got four hundred and twenty pounds for it. Um, I just take quite a lot of that off because I've advertised it a few times that people must be around, so um, I wasn't so keen on that. But yeah, I think I, I think I got four twenty for it in the end. So that's it. That's virtually an entire car history. I, I'm not going to do my mother's cars at the moment. Um, uh, I don't think it's quite the right form for that. But um, thank you ever so much indeed. Uh, once again for watching um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so like this video and uh, leave a comment below um, don't forget to visit my facebook page facebook.com forward slash lloyd bear consulting and also uh, i've got an instagram account instagram.com forward slash lloyd underscore vehicle underscore consulting thank you ever so much indeed for watching